The 15th World Congress of the International Health Economics Association was held in Cape Town, South Africa this year. I recorded some of the events that transpired to share with you from my eyes, and I spoke with my peers as well to get their perspective. Congress was held at the well-known Cape Town International Convention Centre, or CTICC for short. The Congress was held for five days in total, with two of those days being pre-Congress days. The pre-Congress days featured special sessions from a plethora of different topics. The conference was run in collaboration with the African Health Economics and Policy Association, also known as AFIA, and this was the first time that the conference was held on the continent. At the end of day one, Afia were hosting a working shop session at Gold's Restaurant. The working shop had food, entertainment, discussions, and even some cultural exploration. We work and then we chop. <laughs> so we like, yeah, we call it work chop. <laughs> Not work shop, work chop. Yeah. So you work and then you chop. Um, chop in pigeon in English is eating. So you learn one pigeon word. And instead of eating in English, we say chop. In pigeon English, we say chop. After the food was served, each table was assigned one of four points to discuss and brainstorm ideas for. My table looked at point number one, which was teaching health economics in Africa. The most pertinent point raised was redesigning curricula relevant to Africa and also founding more African journals. So in between sessions, I conducted some interviews to hear from other delegates. Here I am with... Uh, I'm Rowena Jacobs from the University of York. And you, am I right in saying that you're originally from Cape Town as well? I am from Cape Town, yeah. It's really lovely to be back. Great. And so I wanted to ask you, um, what does diversifying um, health economics mean to you? Well, it probably means lots of different things to different people, but uh, I think to me it means uh, giving everybody an opportunity to uh, participate equally in the conference, um, to express their views freely um, and to share ideas. Great, thank you. On the second day of the conference, an equality, diversity and inclusion session took place. Given the theme of the conference, it's important for these kind of sessions to take place so we know where we are and see where we're going. Since 1997, 141 countries have been represented at IKEA. And currently there is a total of 74 languages that are spoken amongst members. This conference saw the highest percentage of African delegate participation at 28%. However, more work is needed as South America is a continent that lags behind in participation and membership. And lastly in this session, IHEA's new logo and branding was announced. And we really couldn't find a good reason for a small I. Um, and they advised us, well, it should just be capital I. said, oh, it's going to cause problems, I, you know. I mean, instinctively, my fingers go in certain ways. Um, and then we thought about it, and we thought, why is it small? I stands for international. And it also stands for inclusion. And so this is a big part of the rebranding was actually saying this is where our here's at. Um, so thank you very much. On the same day, I had the opportunity to present some research that I'd been working on for the previous 12 months. So this is a social return on investment evaluation of a social prescribing intervention which is used to support mental health, overall health, physical activity, and social interaction. And we saw that there was a positive social return on investment. So Jonah, what does diversifying health economics mean to you? Diversifying health economics to me means many things, uh, but an aspect I want to highlight in particular is the interrelation with, uh, of uh, climate change, of uh, health economics with climate change. as climate change will uh, impact our health care system in the near future quite substantially. It's uh, considered among the biggest threats to our health care system in the coming century. And uh, why it's also in particular relevant to diversifying uh, health economics is 
is because climate change will affect those most susceptible and most vulnerable among us. Uh, so uh, therefore, diversifying health economics to me means taking into con the consideration the effects of climate change on our healthcare system. Great, thank you. Thank you. My interview with Jonah tied in nicely with the closing plenary session about health economics and climate change. We received a caution, or maybe even a warning, as health economists that if we don't take into consideration some form of sustainability or climate or environment in our work, we will be left behind. What does diversifying health economics mean to you? Uh, I think it's about intersectorial collaboration between policymakers, academics and professionals to make sure that any research that you conduct is applicable to a variety of different environments, contexts, countries, etc. Great, thank you. To break silos between research, policy and practice. And this will enable us um, measure systematically the health co-benefits of climate investments, but equally to identify the environmental and economic consequences of health investments. And here I am with Adi Kemi Boladi. And how have you found the conference so far? Okay, it's been very, very insightful as someone who comes from um, a development space. Uh, it's been quite interesting to get insights from um, government officials and people in public service because they are the ones who get to see um, how um, uh, those programs and initiatives and interventions get to be implemented and then also to see um, the interplay with the academics as well because there you have the theoretical and then you have the public officials who have to see the impact and then you have the development partners who get to uh, be somewhere in between those two to work together. Great and I wanted to ask you what does diversifying health economics mean to you? Okay um, so from my point of view and I think it's um, one of the things which was raised um, during this uh, Congress, it is about understanding how health economics applies in different contexts. So I think one of the things which was raised was how health economics were trained uh, to, um, and the training is not necessarily applicable in the LMIC environment because uh, the situations which we experience are different and um, therefore the, the interventions and the solutions to uh, the challenges should be uh, different but the training which most health economics uh, get seems to be more applicable in um, other environments so uh, the diversity in health economics for me uh, needs to take into consideration the different contexts um, globally where and how um, health economics um, applies in this, uh, in this various environments and to make sure that um, during training, even with implementation, discussions, policies, uh, this um, considerations gets to be um, applied um, and also that these considerations get to, um, to be put forward um, in, the, in various discourses. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So when we speak of capacity building as well, it's not, um, it's not just on the skill side. We may, we may do a lot on creating a, a person ready to be making an impact uh, you know, in terms of policy and, uh, and the, the health economic or scientific skills. But we also create programs on the demand as a, on the on the on the client on the government side because I think when it comes to as you said is there enough capacity to um, is there enough ability to absorb sometimes the decision makers themselves don't realize where this capacity needs to actually exist. As it was the last day of the Congress, I made sure to read the posters on display in greater depth. In the closing plenary session. The next IHEA World Congress location was announced. 
I, I really want to thank the University of Cape Town Health Economics Unit for such a warm welcome to this conference, and I hope to extend as warm an invitation to you now to please all come to Calgary. Um, we have a short video to share with you to show you some of the beauty and activity. Just before wrapping up, I had an interview with the director of AFIA to gain his perspective. I'm with... I'm John Ataguba. And John, um, how have you found the, con the Congress so far? Um, the Congress is um, a great one. Um, it's like our ritual as health economists globally. Um, the Congress has been one that is uniquely um, different in the sense that this is the first time that I hear is holding in a low middle income country and it's happening in Africa and South Africa um, and that um, is something that really ties neatly with the, the, the theme of the, the IHEA Congress which is about diverse, diversity in health economics. And am I right in saying that you previously spent some time in South Africa as well? Yes, I spent uh, a chunk of my career in South Africa. Um, I started my career as a uh, lecturer here in Cape Town and I rose to become a professor of health economics um, in South Africa. Great. And lastly, I wanted to ask you, um, what does the theme of diversifying health economics mean to you? Diversifying in health economics means a lot uh, to many people, but for me, since the question is directly um, targeted at me, I would say it means um, that we have to focus on not just teaching and research, but also people involved in teaching and research. Um, the health economics is a field that has been dominated over the years by um, the global north. Um, and uh, increasingly there has been call for countries to embrace diversity in different forms in terms of people, in terms of the way teaching materials are designed as well as the kind of research that is done. So diversity for me is about inclusiveness and ensuring that everyone is equally represented um, in the whole um, spectrum from teaching to policy advice to um, research and also in terms of how we relate with one another as um, professional health economists. So that concluded the 15th World I Hear Congress. I enjoyed my time in South Africa and I always find that these forums are a place of give and take. They're always worth attending. It's a time to learn, question, re-evaluate, and most importantly, connect, so that we can continue to keep pushing health economics forward.